Howdy everybody, Fifth Star Through Hiker here. Just wanted to do a quick video on some hiking clothing. I'm going to be heading out next week and I was looking through my clothing selection of the things that I have purchased at thrift stores and various other locations thinking to myself, okay, maybe I should do a video about layering and about what to look for at a thrift store. So here we go. First thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, pants, good sturdy pants. Now the first thing that you'll notice about the pants that I purchased that they are not jeans. And the first fiber that you want to stay very clear of is cotton. Cotton is problematic because it absorbs moisture, that it takes a very long time to get dry, that it is not windproof, it is not waterproof, it is not breathable, and it can be heavy as all get out. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about, no jeans on the hiking trail. Uh, your friends, people that are hiking with you, people that are hiking by you are gonna think that you look absolutely ridiculous. What I would suggest is uh, something like this with a zip off bottom uh, that acts as both pant and short pant. This particular material is uh, weatherproof and waterproof. I actually don't know what it's made out of, um, but it is completely designed as a hiking pant. I purchased these at thrift store for probably three, four bucks, something like that. They were in pretty good shape. Uh, the pockets on the back, I had to replace some of the Velcro that was going. As you can see, it's, it's starting to go a little bit, but something that a quick sew can certainly fix. As well as the pant legs themselves, uh, had a, an issue with the clasp on the pants. And so I just had to get another clasp from another pair of pants that I had uh, that also had this same kind of, you know, this elasticity on the side. Other than that, these things were basically brand spanking new. Um, these are breathable. They are waterproof. Um, I wear a poncho for waterproofing, so I like to get things that is, is margin, you know, is, is a little bit waterproof, and that poncho is gonna make me completely waterproof. Uh, windproof, and with the option of being both pants and shorts, highly recommend for weight savings as well. The piece of clothing that I wanted to talk about was just a simple shirt. Something that seems very um, easy, something that we see all over the place, the most important thing about a shirt is, of course, the material that it's made out of. So, uh, the, you know, when you're layering, you want something that's very breathable. When you're hiking, it's hot. And just a traditional cotton t-shirt is not gonna allow the air to move through your body to keep you from sweating. Uh, sweating, is, sweating is both important, not sweating is both important because you wanna maintain water. So the more that you're sweating, the more dehydrated you're gonna become even quicker. And once you get cold, it's gonna take you some time to recover, especially if you're winter camping, you know, uh, sweating is actually akin to a very dangerous thing because that can freeze over time. So I want you to look up on your clothing for polyesters, for synthetic materials, uh, for nylon, so things that have no cotton in them or are uh, a blend at the most, something that's stretchable and it sort of has an elasticity to it as, as well as being breathable. So this actually happens to be a Patagonia. I did find this at a thrift store. Now this is an example of you know finding a good brand at a thrift store, but making sure that the actual material itself matches what it is that you're looking for. So I'll give you an example. So the Patagonia of the material that I was looking for, you know, the stretch elastic nylon flavor over there. Now this is a Patagonia that I found at the thrift store that is not any of those things. This is a cotton blend. So again, Patagonia, got it for relatively inexpensive, uh, saw that it had the name brand on it, got really excited about it, brought it home, and realized that it was made out of, a, this is a cotton blend. So um, something that, that just because the brand says, hey, I'm hiker, hey, I generally make good quality gear, um, be careful. You know, the most important thing is what it is made out of, not who makes it. And that's something that you can you know, take to the bank. All right, after my short sleeve shirt, I usually bring two short sleeve shirts depending on how far I'm hiking. Uh, this is another one that I have that's also sort of the same material, very lightweight, very small. Uh, depends on how, you, how much you sweat, depends on if you like to walk around without a shirt on at your campsite, depends on how isolated that you're gonna be, whether or not you're gonna bring one or, or two. Um, I also try to do some laundry along the way, sometimes washing it in a creek, hanging it on my backpack. Uh, that way it keeps the stink down a little bit. My next layer on top of that, so as you notice here that I've got multiple layers, that a lot of the stuff can be used in the winter time, in the summertime, because of the breathability, because of the insulating factor, um, and because of the fact that I can regulate my body temperature as I'm walking. This is a smart wool sweater. 
All right, um, it's a merino wool, so it's a pretty lightweight wool. As you can see, it's uh, it's linty as all heck because I just washed it. Um, but this is one of the better finds that I found at the thrift store. Uh, I've told this story before on a different video, but uh, I saw that there was some damage to it and walked up to the front. As you can see, some right here, as somebody clearly had tried to wash it and started uh, tearing and moving a little bit. So I brought it to the front of the store. They had like a $4 tag on it. And I said, hey, look at this, this is a problem. And they said they would give it to me for 99 cents. So one of the things that I would encourage you when you're at a thrift store is if you see a problem with something, go and talk to the management. See if they'll, if they'll do it for you. A lot of times they've got a lot of inventory. They're trying to get stuff off the shelves. Um, they would rather have that dollar or $2 than the $5 and it may not sell. Talk to them. A lot of times I've found great deals of just spraying to the front and showing them damage on items that they might have missed. Now this merino wool is excellent, an excellent fabric because it is very lightweight. It crunches up fairly small for the fact that this is a wool sweater. Uh, the fact that it has the neck gaiter that goes all the way up to the top gives you some comfortability, uh, gives you a little bit of warmth. Um, that wool is an excellent fiber for a mid layer because of the fact that it's so warm and wool will wick moisture better than any other natural fiber. So if this were to get wet, this would still keep me warm. A fleece or a cotton material that is of the same quality, once it got wet, would be no good, right? I could take that, I would have to take that off because all the insulation factor would be gone. With wool, it still insulates even if it is cold. And so that's what makes it an excellent mid layer if need be. So after our short sleeve shirt, long sleeve shirt, and our sweater, uh, the next thing is our undergarments. So generally on trail, I bring two undergarments, no matter how long I'm hiking, although it depends on, you know, if I'm hiking for multiple weeks, maybe I'd consider getting more. Uh, but just a, uh, so Ex Officio is a, is a brand that has this, uh, this is elastic, breathable fabric. Ex Officio is a company that was, is known for you know, being able to wash this thing in, uh, in a hotel room, uh, when you're traveling, in a hostel, hanging it up and, it, and it's quite quick to dry. I prefer hiking in something that's a little bit looser for those guys out there um, because I like to have a little bit of breathability. You may find that uh, that is not what you're looking for and so that you want something more nylon, something more hugging. Uh, but I find that this, this, you know, with a little bit of extra room down here in the crotch area, I find that it works best for me. But whatever it is that you purchase, I, you want something of quality, you want something that is nylon, you want something that is going to wick away from your, of your body. So what I mean by that is when you sweat, uh, a cotton blend or cotton, uh, even a lot of organic materials are going to absorb that water with something like a nylon that is going to push that water away. It's not gonna absorb into the, into the fabric, it's going to push it away from your body and therefore keeping you dry, helping with chafing, helping with rashes, that kind of thing, which is a huge consideration if you're hiking a three, four, five, six hundred mile trip, trek. So Ex Officio, great brand. Uh, uh, I would not recommend buying these at a thrift store necessarily. You might be a little bit more um, uh, badass than I am or willing to take a risk than I am, but that's just one thing that I had to purchase for new for myself. Although my long johns actually did come from a thrift store. So the other piece of clothing that I like to bring, the other piece of underwear is long johns that are nylon, uh, sometimes you know now referred to as spandex now that, now that we're in 2020. Um, I like having long, long johns for the warmth of, and I like to sleep in them. Um, also, generally, depending on how many people are around me on trail or if I'm way out in the wilderness, um, when I get there, I will take my pants off, I'll take my underwear off, I'll put these on, and these will just be my trail pants. They're nice and stretchy, they provide you know enough for walking through brush, that I'm not gonna get a tick, that I'm not going to get a mosquito bite, but they're ultra lightweight. And I can also use it as a layering in case it does get really cold, having long johns for sleeping, having long johns the next day, you get a freak snowstorm. I can put these bad boys on underneath my hiking pants, give me that extra bit of insulation. Again, later. So I decided that I really wanted a sun shirt. Uh, after doing a stretch of the Colorado Trail that was all in burn area, uh, I went through a lot of, of protection, sun protection, uh, and it's heavy. So if you're bringing sunscreen with you, which you need to bring with you, 
bringing lots of it and covering up exposed parts of your body it can be heavy. Uh, reapplying, you might forget. Uh, sometimes sunscreen doesn't stay if you're sweating. So I really wanted to make sure that I didn't get sunburned. When I was doing uh, the Wicklow Way in Scotland, believe it or not, I burned very badly the backs of my kneecaps by not because I wasn't wearing sunscreen uh, there and was unable, we had to take a day off because it was so, it was so painful for me to uh, extend and, and contract my legs. So anyways, um, certain clothing has actually different SPF ratings. Uh, this is a, a, a brand called Sol Umbra. So I went specifically to a thrift store to find a sun shirt. And the SPF rating on this one was is like a 60 or a 70, so extremely high. And this brand I was very lucky to have found because of the fact that the uh, it has sort of this, this breathable fabric, uh, as you can see right here, underneath the armpits, as well as in the back, that have got nice big pockets in here, that it's a nice beige color, so a light color, so help make, you know, keep the sun off of me. But essentially covering myself from wrist all the way up my neck. I usually wear a bandana around my neck. Uh, and then just my sunscreen on my face. All of those are really important on trail. You know, we, especially up in Colorado where I am or where you may be hiking up in the mountains, you gotta think that you're gonna be 12,000, 13,000, in some cases, 14,000 feet in the, in the air. So the atmosphere is a lot thinner and you're a lot closer to the sun. And especially if you're doing a multi-day hike, the, the worst, days are the ones when you've got sunburn. Uh, sure, at some point anybody's tried to sleep with sunburn, you sleep terribly. You may not be carrying aloe back there, so uh, I would recommend Sol Umbra. Go to the store though and make sure that you get a brand that you can look it up on Google for what the SPF rating is or the UPF rating is of the clothing itself. Um, a generally a t-shirt, this, this t-shirt might have like a, a 15 or 20 rating, uh, but clothing actually does have a rating as well. So really, really important, get yourself a sun shirt. And on that same path is my sun hat. So I went to the thrift store looking specifically again for a, for a hat. This one checked all the boxes what I was looking for. So the first thing that I was looking for is very small portability size. I mean, this thing is, is a relatively thin fabric. The second was I wanted a nice big brim. So that way when I put it on, I was covering the back of my neck. I'm covering you know the sides of my temples. I'm covering my ears. I'm covering my nose. Um, I wanted to make sure that when I'm on trail that I'm able to see and then I'm not staring in glare the whole time. And uh, you know, I got a little bit creative with my patch up here. This is a band that I like to listen to. So you know, my weird green hat at least is a little bit more personalized. And underneath all of that, the most important thing, your feet get you in, your feet get you out. So um, I have actually gone thrift shop shopping for socks before. I found actually that thrift store socks are in pretty good condition. Most people that donate socks know that if it's got holes in it or something like that, uh, they, uh, many times I've found brand new socks. The brand that I like to look for is Darn Tough. So I was actually at the thrift store the other day and I ran into a pair of these. They were in the 29 cent barrel. Um, why Darn Tough is really an important brand is because Darn Tough has a 100% lifetime guarantee. So when you're wearing these merino wool socks, not only are they gonna be moisture wicking, not only are they gonna provide good insulation, not only are they thick so that you've got some padding while you're, while you're hiking, but if they break down as socks do over time, you can actually send them back to the company and the company will send you a brand new pair of socks. So um, I found these socks and when they break down, I will send them back to Darn Tough and they will send me back a new pair. Um, as you can see, this one had a slight, uh, the, the bottoms of them were starting to wear. So right here, you'll see some stitching right here. And again, with thrift store through hiking, what I want you to get to is the fact that you can modify things that might be imperfect. These socks, you know, are imperfect. They had a small hole in the bottom of them. And with the help of just a little bit of, of elbow grease, and uh, a, need a needle and thread, which is something that if you're camping and hiking at all times, you should know how to use. You might have to fix a tent, you might have to fix your shoes, you might have to fix a sock, you might have to put together shirts, whatever it is, we don't carry enough to not be able to repair the things that break down on us. Uh, being able to darn a sock, you will definitely get a hole in a sock along one of your hiking routes, and it's good to know how to do that. So um, again, modifying your socks. And then the second pair of socks can be really, really simple. So Darn Tough would be one brand that I would suggest and one material that I would suggest. But the last would just be a simple dress sock. 
All right, a simple dress sock. These happen to be sort of fun colors. I liked them because it'd be kind of fun while I was hiking. But the most important thing is these are nylon. So nylons are relatively thin. If you've got a lot of fat on your feet, if you find that you don't get blisters a lot, um, if you have a really good cushion, air cushion, uh, as in a previous video I talked about within your shoe, like a good insert, um, a thinner sock like this you can get away with because you know you don't necessarily need uh, all that pressure isn't gonna, gonna create a lot of drag on your foot and create a lot of friction on your foot. So nylon is great because again, it's that wicking moisture. So when you're on trail, the last thing you want is swampy feet. You don't want wet feet. That's what causes blisters. That's what causes problems. So nylon is excellent for that. And as an added bonus, nylon can get wet and can still work, dries very, very quickly, and it, it scrunches up really, really, really tiny. So when I'm out on trail, I usually have one sock that is my hiking sock for the day. When I get to camp, I will take those, I'll put those in a tree. Uh, if I need to do a quick wash in a, in a river, I'll give them a quick wash on the creek. Um, and then these are my camping socks. So nice and dry, always keeping my feet dry, help keep the stink down, and it's just, you know, there's nothing better than a nice pair of socks when you're when you come back to camp. So that was my entire kit as far as my, uh, my head to toe. Hopefully that wasn't too long of an explanation, but don't forget to layer. Don't forget that we need things to be insulating, wicking, breathable, weatherproof, and waterproof. And that brand is secondary to the actual material itself. So shop smart, check those tags. See you guys.